good morning, or this afternoon. Okay. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the president of uh, AATT uh, for inviting us to come uh, from all the way from Africa to come and share our experiences uh, down there with you. And uh, it's quite a privilege and an honor for us to be here and also to share with you uh, our experiences. Now, having looked at the presentations that have been going on um, in the last uh, one and a half days, um, I think this, there are some things that we've noted, or rather personal, that I've uh, actually noted that I think is, is good uh, uh, and that we actually appreciate, especially uh, having been given this opportunity to, to share with you. Um, and, and therefore, I just want to draw uh, some parallel between uh, Europe and Africa, and particularly um, uh, Europe and, and Kenya for that matter. Uh, which will basically try to put uh, my presentation into the right perspe perspective. Um, we note that um, uh, VDSL, or XDSL for that matter, is still uh, quite a, a big uh, uh, technology that is still, to a large extent, being used very much. And um, down in Kenya, for example, I think, it, it, from my perspective, it's like VS, uh, XDSL is a technology that had already died. But it's not that it has died, but it has died in my mind because um, down in Africa, whereas the developed world uh, had well-developed um, you know, cable infrastructure to provide fixed line services, in Africa, the development of the cable infrastructure was, not, was very limited. And, uh, and then when technology, wireless technology started to take over, we realized that uh, the fixed line basically died a natural death. Not perhaps because it was not well developed, but there were also additional challenges that uh, uh, the fixed line actually experienced. And some of those challenges were issues of vandalism, uh, where people were trying to you know, remove copper for resale and things like that. And that basically uh, sort of killed uh, the fixed line uh, infrastructure in, 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 in Kenya, for example. And so um, uh, when the more wireless revolution came in, uh, I think it became uh, the in thing for Africa to be able to use as a way of leveraging on its uh, capability to provide uh, services in Africa. And so the hallmark of my presentation today is about how mobile wireless has actually transformed um, the, co the uh, provision of telecommunication services in Kenya. Um, so basically what I'm going to take you through, uh, I'm going to take you through our mobile network development. Um, the regulatory regime, the fina mobile financial services, the mobile banking services, the challenges we've gone through uh, even in trying to uh, adopt these services, and some of the priority areas that we think we need to take up as uh, ways of, I mean, for consideration for us to go forward. And then, of course, we'll end up our presentation with a conclusion. Uh, just to give you a background of what uh, uh, Communications Commission of Kenya, the regulatory authority that I work in, is um, it is, uh, the one that actually regulates the, the telecommunications sector in Kenya. And it was established in 1999 uh, under the Kenya Communications Act 1998. And basically, it is responsible for uh, facilitating the development of information and communication sector in, in the country. And that includes, of course, uh, broadcasting, multimedia, telecommunications, and postal services. And of course, recently, we have now the mandate also to regulate electronic commerce. And so, um, in the pre-liberalization uh, in Kenya, um, just to give you a, bag, a little bit of a background of how our telecom services have developed, um, we had an incumbent that uh, operated both the fixed and mobile uh, network. Of course, uh, at that time, the mobile had not quite developed. And, uh, and so, as you may realize from my presentation, is that at that time, we had about, just about 291,000 subscribers in the fixed service. Um, and while the mobile network only had uh, 20,000 subscribers. But of course, over and above that, we can see that we had a waiting list. I don't know whether this is a term that is familiar in Europe, but waiting list is basically um, uh, the customer, the number of customers that have expressed the need to be served, with a, uh, provided with the service, but whom, whose uh, requests have not been met by the uh, operator. And so if you look at those statistics, you'll realize 
that the number of waiting lists was actually a third of the number of uh, subscribers that the fixed operator then had actually connected in their network. So that basically can actually give you uh, a picture of how perhaps um, the development of the network was and the challenges it was, it was experiencing. Uh, basically, there is demand, but then there's no ability to meet it. And I guess it was because, uh, you know, running uh, cable net infrastructure was not an easy task, and so it was not quite easy to be able to meet uh, the demand. And so um, another challenge that perhaps inhibited, uh, you know, development of communication services was uh, to get a mobile line, actually you have to, you have to go through vetting um, by the security agencies because it was still considered a security issue, so to speak. Um, it, you couldn't just walk in a shop and get a mobile phone and start using it around. And then, of course, the cost of, of the mobile handset was very prohibitive, and as you can see, at that particular time, uh, the cost of uh, one mobile handset was 250 Kenya, thousand Kenya shillings, which, um, looking at the exchange rate, which I, I just tried to guess, uh, back in 1999, uh, perhaps would translate to 5,000, uh, US dollars, which is very uh, prohibitive then. And how about airtime? I just can't imagine how much it was, of course, because it was a preserve of the, of the rich. So we, only them really knew what it costed them to make a, a, call, a phone call. Then we had the era of liberalization, where in 1999, then we, around July 1999, the, the incumbent then, the Kenya Post and Telecommunications, was split into uh, those four entities that you can see, one of them being the, the regulator, and of course the incumbent operator, Telcom Kenya, and then we have the Postal Corporation of Kenya, which was the public uh, postal operator. And then we had the first mobile uh, operator, which was basically hived off uh, from the initial uh, incumbent, because as I said initially, uh, there was the, the fixed operator also provided uh, mobile services as a subsidiary, with a, through a subsidiary. Then, of course, we had the second operator coming in uh, around January uh, 28th of 2000. Now, uh, that graph over there simply gives you a picture of how um, the demand versus supply was actually playing out. Um, I, I must apologize, I didn't give you the complete picture, maybe for the entire period between 1989 and 2004. But you can clearly see that uh, um, the fixed, uh, there was a lot of demand for fixed yet the supply was very low. So uh, as you can see, the, the line, the blue line below was actually the, uh, the total number of subscribers that the operators could actually uh, afford. But then the, li the red line is actually the, the actual demand. Now, so with that kind of situation where there is a lot of demand for services, but that which cannot be met, the two graphs that we can see before us basically underscores uh, how the demand then drove the mobile networks when the mobile operators were licensed and they started offering services. Um, and so you can see that um, um, the, as you can see, this, uh, this was the target of one of the um, operators that were uh, licensed. And so they had fixed their target. And if you can see, this target is actually far way below what they actually connected. And it didn't take even perhaps uh, more than a year for them to be able to overshoot their target uh, with the number of subscribers that were actually getting connected to their network. So there was basically a great boom in mobile subscription uh, that was far beyond what the operators actually targeted to achieve. Um, the next graph basically, um, sorry about that. The next graph basically sh uh, shows us um, the statistics about the total number of mobile subscription against uh, the fixed line subscription, and as you can see, just slightly over a, a year after the mobile operators were uh, commenced or, or providing services, um, the mobile subscription overshot uh, the fixed line uh, subscription. And so that is the situation, because now there was a lot of demand of services, and when the mobile, mobile uh, services came up and it was easy to acquire them, then the numbers just are shot beyond uh, imaginations. So then we went through um, uh, market evolution and where we can actually see that uh, 
We had the uh, pre-liberalization era, which, is, which was actually between 2000 to 2004. And this era was actually characterized by technology-specific uh, licenses, where two, we had the two mobile operators are being licensed. Then there are, uh, around 2004, we had um, full liberalization taking place. And here, um, we, we started looking at our licensing framework, and we, that because technology was actually becoming, um, uh, was actually blurring uh, the, 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 the boundaries between the services and the, and, and the infrastructure, infrastructure itself. Then there about 2008 and, 2000 and, and 2004 to 2008, we had two additional operators actually being added into, the, uh, into our mobile service. And during this particular time is when we also conducted uh, a technology uh, neutral, uh, neutrality. And uh, so from then up to date, we ended up having in our regulatory framework a unified licensing framework, which as we shall see ahead of this presentation, uh, contributed a lot to the development of mobile communication services in Kenya. Now, uh, this, the entire period to date, as you can see, um, there was quite a, a large, I mean, a tremendous growth of mobile subscribers. So we are looking at figures that started from all the way from 20,000 in 1999 to now we have about 30 million uh, subscribers by December 2012. Um, and of course, the services basically have, in, have evolved from basic voice services uh, S and SMS to right now we have, of course, internet and uh, innovative applications that are, being, uh, that are coming up every single day. And that graph basically shows um, the trajectory that has been taken by the mobile uh, subscriptions. And as you can also realize is that the prepaid services actually takes the largest chunk of uh, subscriptions at 99.9%. .9%. And I guess this basically is very good for the mobile operators because they are assured of their revenue generation. Uh, there is, they have no problems of debt collection. And so what are some of the drivers of the mobile growth in Kenya? Are some of the drivers that we look at are the suppressed demand that was there initially, which basically got instant solution when the mobile operators were licensed. And then we have access to uh, mobile connection, uh, which became quite easy, like I said before, initially, if you wanted to get a mobile phone, then you had to be vetted. I mean, the security agencies had to make sure that you're the right person to get that kind of a gadget. But then, of course, when we had instant access to mobile service, that became a, a big driver. Um, the cost of handset also dropped significantly. Immediately, immediately the two operators were, uh, were licensed. And as you can see, uh, the figures came down to almost uh, one fiftieth uh, of, of, of the initial uh, figures of acquiring a, mo a mobile handset, and so basically it became uh, easier and quicker to, ch I mean, to, ch to acquire the mobile phone. Um, of course, the mobile phones changed from a, a status symbol, but then it became a necessity because many people had uh, were thirsty for communication, and and so. When we look at the mobile communication industry in Kenya right now, we are talking about um, uh, some st uh, traffic statistics which uh, put uh, quarterly on net traffic uh, to about 6.3 billion um, of voice communication, while, whereas the off net traffic we are looking at about one, uh, one, one billion traffic uh, shared uh, w within the, uh, the, the Nini, across the networks which translates basically to about 7.3 billion of, of voice traffic you know, uh, delivered over a period of three months. So if we were to look at this to, through an entire year, then you're talking about about 24 billion of uh, uh, voice traffic being uh, transacted in mobile uh, industry in Kenya. When you look at the SMS, we're talking about a total of 3.7 billion uh, SMS being transacted in, in one quarter, which will, of course basically translates to about 12 a billion of SMS traffic. So what, what are the impacts of uh, mobile network development in Kenya? Um, one of the things that we've already talked about is that the cost of handsets uh, drastically you know, uh, came down from all the way from $5,000 US dollars to about currently just about 15, uh, 15 US dollars. And of course, we have had significant increase in accessibility to communication services. 
Uh, notably, which is more, much more important and that uh, facilitates success is that uh, the cost of services have also significantly reduced to just about $0.04 uh, dollars per, per minute.